Werewolf Comic, Prohibition Era, and Booze. Sounds like a good time. Hi everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geek Them here on YouTube. My name is Javon Menendez, and today we're going to be talking about Brian Atzarillo's and Eduardo Rizzo's Moonshine Volume 1. It is a very interesting book, and in case you're wondering, this isn't the regular cover, this is the DCBS variant, which I got off of a famous website. So, uh, what is Moonshine about? This gangster, this uh, low level, I guess I should say, or this uh, city slick gangster from New York, Lou Pirlo, he is moving to the Appalachians at the request of his gangster boss to get a very specific brand of moonshine. This is in the midst of uh, Prohibition, Great Depression, and of course the upcoming Second World War. So it is a very interesting taboo time in, in regards to uh, what people uh, were consuming, what they were uh, indulging in. I guess I should say, in the history of the US. This is no exception. It touches on the issues of the time. You deal a little bit with uh, racism, with the contraband market, with uh, prohibition, of course. Plus, it's a horror comic book with the central theme of werewolves. Now, I am a huge fan of movie monsters. That is my type of horror, I guess. I'm not too into the whole slasher scene, uh, the paranormal stuff. Uh, I do like the subject matter. I like reading about it in real life, but not necessarily watching a movie about it. I, I don't know, I prefer uh, a more sci-fi approach. Uh, your aliens, uh, monsters, uh, uh, freaking universal monsters, and all that stuff. And one of the things I like, uh, very specifically, are werewolves. I love uh, the mythology behind it, and the stories, and uh, it just the movies and books and all that stuff. So I was really excited when I, I think somebody online recommended the book to me. I don't know where I got the idea to get it, but uh, somebody recommended the book to me. And I gotta say, I had to read this book. This was supposed to come out a while ago, but I waited until Halloween, you know, the whole Spooktober thing that you guys like, and to at least try and put a uh, Halloween-themed video on this channel. But I had to read it three times, actually two times, uh, because I was a little bit conflicted by it. At first, I gotta be honest with you, I was a little bit lost, and it had to do with the fact that the way uh, the art works in this book with uh, Rizzo's art, it's beautiful, don't get me wrong. This high quality contrast of lights and shadows and using uh, colored backgrounds to indicate the mood that the reader is going to experience, it is very indicative of a smart and beautifully crafted comic book, do not get me wrong. However, some of the faces are pretty similar to the point where there's a gangster battle near the end of this book and I was like, wait, this guy is that other guy? So I had to go back and like, oh, okay, this guy, like there's two Tonys involved and there's another guy called Ducky because I guess he has uh, a duck-like face. And you sort of get lost because they all look grungy and, and of the time, you know, they're not clean cut. The only, and, and even our main protagonist, sure, he's got that swagger on, but nobody's clean in this book. Everybody's hiding something. There's an ulterior motive. There's vengeance. There's blood. There's swearing. There is sex. There is a lot of things involved in this story. Now, the character of Lou travels to the Appalachian Mountains, of course, like I said at the beginning of the video, and when he gets here, when he gets there, I should say, not here, I don't live there, uh, when he gets there, he is looking for the uh, Holt uh, dude that is making the booze that uh, this uh, New York gangster wants to export or sell through, uh, uh, you know, uh, darker means with the high class because it is a quality moonshine product that people will want to uh, buy and continue drinking. At first, Holt is uh, skeptical and they don't really get off to a great start. The character of Lou 
Uh, he is one of these guys that is more of a messenger. He's not really a doer. He is the type that will deliver that message, but won't actually go along with the plan. There will always be somebody that, uh, that does that specifically. So this is a chance for this character to do that for the very first time, so he's very nervous about it. He goes, he goes to meet with Holt, and it's a very fun uh, scene that I really enjoyed when he's trying to explain uh, what, uh, what, who, and where, and, and all of that stuff with uh, these characters. And uh, it's a rocky start. And eventually there's betrayal, there is a little bit of a romance, there's a huge ton of uh, mysticism involved. And that is one of the things that I really enjoyed. And I kind of wanted more out of it. I know the story is not complete because there's more, it's an ongoing series. But the story does, you know, if there weren't any other issues, it kind of sort of concludes in a, in a cliffhanger -y way. But I could see it not going forward. Like, it's fine the way it ends. I, I don't necessarily enjoy the way it ends, but it, it's okay. I don't know if you guys are getting me. But uh, the whole thing with Moonshine is this exploration of, uh, of a rich cultural background that rarely gets explored. The Appalachian Mountains are filled with a lot of amazing folklore and some weird shit, pardon my expression. The fact that they're able to mix in like American werewolves and all that stuff, it's actually pretty freaking great. The illustrations, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, are superb. Rizzo and uh, Azzarello make a dynamic duo, a, a tour de force if you will. Azzarello uh, has the lingo down, the way everybody's talking with the accents and all that stuff, and just the way uh, rural America went about its business back in the day. It's very uh, crisp and genuine, in my opinion, and I think uh, Brian does a really good job. With the art, however, it's a tour de force. Like I mentioned at the beginning, the contrast and if it's a uh, scene with the mob boss, the, like, the background is blue, and if it's in the middle of town, it's a very dingy looking town. You see a lot of earthy uh yellowish colors and all that stuff if that's if it's in the mountains of course at night there's a lot of playing with uh, lights and shadows it's a superb artistic book that i really really recommend if you want to read a good horror story that you know it's not necessarily a hundred percent about the spook because you i'll be honest with you it could have been scarier or you could have shown a little bit more but it's just enough to intrigue you and hopefully with the I think volume 2 comes out in a couple months uh, as of this video or next month I, I'm not too sure uh, I, I hope that we do get more horror elements because there is uh, something there to be explored out of this rich uh, cultural background especially with I believe her name was uh, Dahlia she is a black woman that is uh, she's sort of like this uh, shaman-esque character and she's involved with I think uh, uh, voodooish practices or something she's able to link uh, Lou with his personal demons and what he's going through physically with the Holt family and all that stuff I don't want to give everything away but I, I do want to intrigue you now the horror element if that is what you're after it's actually really freaking great like the scenes where you see the werewolves are really frightening and spooky and i loved it i wish there was just a little bit more it, it, this is a mob uh crime thriller from the 20s i believe this is in 1929 mixed with a horror fantasy element that i wish could be explored a little bit longer again i don't know what happens beyond the first six issues in this trade but it looks a superb and uh, I don't know at first and I believe I wrote to my friends at first I wasn't too sure what to think of the book but I kept uh, thinking all day before uh, recording this now about the book and about what I read and I actually really friggin enjoyed it and I went back in and to look at the art and, and, and get a few more uh, 
details before I started talking with you guys, and I really enjoyed it. I really loved this. Uh, like, scenes like this, I don't know if the camera is focusing or not, it looks it looks really impressive. And just uh, the layouts and the usage of, of confined space to give you that uh, paranoia and fear that you're running away from something, whether it be supernatural in nature, uh, a monster or, or another fellow human being that's shooting at you, something like that. It, it gives off this sense of, of uh, like, like you're reading something that happened back in the day, you know? Look at this. This is a very somber, angry scene, so of course we use the color yellow, uh, it, you know, to uh, express emotions beautifully. Same with this, you know, uh, uh, the twilight hour is approaching, so you gotta down the colors a bit. And it just keeps going on and on in a beautiful way. See what I meant with the usage of, set of shadows? And uh, there's a, a little wolf action right there. There's not a lot of extras, just uh, variants. Yeah, just literally just two pages of uh, the images they used for the variant covers and all that stuff. I gotta say, this book is pretty freaking awesome. I, I was a little bit skeptical, but it's, it's pretty interesting. I wish, like I mentioned earlier, I wish we could have uh, a little bit more horror thrown in but at the end but at the end of the day you know like i mentioned it's it's more of a crime drama and of course if you're talking werewolves there is sort of the curse of the werewolf and what the character that is cursed has to deal with and face repercussions and we see characters reflecting on things that have happened to them and how they progress forward and facing their fears while at the same time experiencing fear I, I don't know what did you guys think of moonshine have you read it let me know down below if not let me know which is your favorite or what is your favorite horror book to read in October. I'm very interested in finding out. So yeah, anyways, uh, thank you guys. Thank you for making this happen. This channel is because of you guys. I love entertaining you. And if you would be so kind, you can like, comment, subscribe, follow me on your favorite social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. Guys, thank you so much. I will catch all of you on our next episode.